Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how I color correct my montages. I'll do this in two separate ways. One way where I use the plugins that I prefer to use, and then I'll do it with the default plugins just built into Adobe Premiere. Now a disclaimer before I begin. Every map has different colors, different lighting, and even within the same map there's different colors and lighting. So color correction will always alter and change and adjust to whatever is on screen. So for this one I'm just going to show you the basic color correction I like to use on, this is the Coliseum map in Halo 5, but it's something I would apply at the beginning to almost all of mine and then adjust to match or better fit the map and coloring later. The two plugins I use originally are from Magic Bullet. I use Magic Bullet Looks and Magic Bullet Mojo. I add a adjustment layer to do that. You just go down here, new adjustment layer. I have to bring it over because I'm using multiple screens. So sorry, it looks a little funny. Stretch it to as long as your clip is. It could be just for the Coliseum clips or you could have this as a default over your whole thing. Now, the first thing I like to add is Magic Bullet Looks. So I just type in Looks, go down, find Magic Bullet Looks, slap that on there. We'll add Mojo on later. So now I can go into my effects controls. You'll see looks is here. Obviously nothing's happened, even if you turn the layer on and off because there hasn't been any looks applied. Go edit looks. Now I have some of my default ones up here and we're gonna just mimic one of the ones up here, but we're gonna start over with it. So the first thing I like to do is you click into subject here, bring your tools over and I find the gradient exposure. because so I like to have the top a little brighter than the bottom. So we hide that and we can go into tools and you can see you can light the top from the bottom like a gradient. Obviously you don't wanna go crazy like this. Bring it up, say maybe, say 0.9, which is still pretty bright. And like I said, it'll vary per map. And then the next thing I like to do is bring up the blacks a little bit. It's kind of like an artsy thing a lot of people do with their uh, wedding photos and everything now. I know my one wedding photographer friend hates it, but I don't mind it. So I bring over the curves and I'm gonna play with just the bottom curve here of the black and white. So you're gonna basically add a fade. This is way too much, but the idea is, let me add a second button here, second control, so I only am fading the blacks. I'm just gonna fade it up a little. So because this footage I'm working with is lower quality and then say like a nice 4K or 1080p footage, I have to work around that. So this is one way to kind of hide the lower quality by bringing up the blacks slightly. The next thing I like to add is a slight diffusion, which will take all the highlighted bright areas and make them glow slightly. So I go into matte, go back in your tools, grab diffusion. And here you can play around with it a lot to find what you like. All right, let's go like a, a 10, 11 area. The grade, you can play with this here, it goes all over the place. I don't want it up too much because it looks blurry. So I'm gonna bring it down to basically a two. You can play with the glow too, obviously sliding it all around. I think something around 60 looks great. Highlights only, I'm gonna up that more because I do want it to be highlights only. I'm gonna go 88. And then I'm gonna grab the color of what it is. So it's mainly highlighting or turning it to white. I'm gonna turn it to a light blue. So you can't see much here, but basically if you turn it on and off, you can see the subtle, subtle stuff you did. Again, because the footage is lower quality, it's kind of nice to add a little bit of a blur, a little bit of a glow, just adding something to it here. Next into lens, I like to add a vignette, and this is a vignette I actually copy from the old Avengers montage that Muggsy and CJ New did. Instead of having the vignette right in the center, they brought it up slightly. Let's see how I have it here. Can't really see much because it's a very, very light vignette. But let me go into controls and you could make it a little larger there and you could change the amount and everything too, like make it darker. The idea is just to have like a subtle, subtle vignette where the top is still bright so the action and the focus is mainly up here next i actually add noise into it so i go into camera i'm gonna go renoiser you'll see it added like a little bit of noise here it might be hard to see on youtube because of the you know the quality of youtube but if you're actually doing this following along you can see that it added some noise there it's a little too much i would say for me so let's say grain amount all right, so I'll do 25. So it's slightly added that. Again, it's because the quality of the footage is lower, so this is gonna help us carry it. And now you can see the main thing popping out is how bright the top is here. So for that, I'm gonna go, I'm still in the camera tools, but I'm gonna add a shoulder, which is gonna bring down the highlights. You see it brought down a lot there, but we're actually just gonna use the default. So then we have that there, and it just improves it slightly there if you can compare it before and after, clicking on and off. And now the second thing I add is I bring my effects over, and I go Mojo. And I'll slap that on. So the same adjustment layer. You can see it kind of goes crazy for a second because that's the, the default one. And this isn't a flat video. So we're gonna go straight back to video here. And then I'm gonna change the preset from Mojo to Light. And then from here, it's still fairly strong. You can see how much we, 
we did it looks a little too over the top like a little a little too much so what i like to do actually now in the adjustment layer itself is go into the opacity of each of the effects so in looks here i'm going to change that to a 75 so it just slightly brought it down and in strength of mojo here i'm going to bring that down to 80. and what's nice is you can still compare it see how you like it personally i like it i like how that looks we can compare it in other sections later like he's scoped in here this is before this is after it's definitely the color correction i like you can see with the color correction without so it's just subtle i like making it look professional and crisp and not too crazy my older montages i might have went a little more nuts with the color correction but you can see this is what i did here using looks and mojo so both magic bullet plugins again you would completely adjust this to not only what you personally like but what the map is how colorful it is how bright it is how dark it is basically you're going to play and tweak with it to your heart's content but these are the defaults i would set it to and i would almost just copy these defaults to other maps and then adjust from there because so look at that that looks beautiful the normal one that one. it's even just subtle and you probably can't even see that much on youtube but i I enjoy just the crisp, clear, professional look of it there. Now we're gonna do the same thing without using the two plugins. We're gonna use the default color correction or default tools within Premiere Pro. Hide this adjustment layer so you can't see it. And we're gonna put a new one in here. Let's grab the bin, grab our adjustment layer, slap it on just so we can compare them later. So we have it here and now I'm on the color tab already. And over in the color tab, it had the default color is a Luma color that'll kick in when you start applying these effects onto something you're selected. So I don't even have to drag in an effect here. Just the fact I'm on the color tab already is nice. I'm also gonna bring up Luma scopes so you can see where your blacks and whites are. You can see what's highlighting, what's peaking, what's not. To start off here, I'm actually gonna go in creative. And in creative, I'm going to find the neutral start. As you can see, it's kind of faking what Mojo had using this neutral start, but obviously the intensity is too much. So let's bring this down to 75 area, which is still quite a lot. Let's bring it down a little more. Let's go 69, it makes it look a little bit better. You can always compare back and forth. It's a little dark. So what we're going to do is bring up the blacks like I did in the other one. So we're going to grab the faded film and just bring it up a bit so the blacks are brought up slightly here. You can always just keep comparing if you want. It's brought up maybe a little too much, but I like it. And I always like bringing up the color correction, or sorry, the saturation slightly because it's uh, it's nice to play with. Let's go back into the basic color correction, so the one above it. We're going to make it slightly brighter because these games are pretty dark. In exposure, we're just going to bring let's say to a 0.6. The highlights are a little too much, so we're gonna grab the highlights and just bring them down slightly here. And you could even bring your shadows up slightly just to help again with the fading you did earlier. I'm not gonna to touch the curves because we kind of played with that already. So I'm gonna move the highlight color in the color wheels to slight blue to match what we had before. And I'm gonna move the midtones and shadows to a slightly orange red, just barely though. And you can play with it there. And now I'm gonna to try to make the vignette that I had using the other color correction, or using my plugins before. So the amount, I'm gonna bring it to just a minus two, because if you go positive, it actually adds a, a white when I want a black. But I just want a subtle one, because you see it actually really darkens it. So let's go, we'll do a minus three. What you can do actually is bring it all the way in, just so you can see where it is, and then adjust like your mid-tone and stuff like that. So my midpoint is gonna be like a 19. My roundness, uh, I keep maybe around a minus 10 or so. And then the feathering, I'm gonna bring down to a 30 something. Now it's too dark, but we used it like that so we could see. I'm just gonna bring this up and have it slightly around here and you can just turn it on and off. I think it's too strong, honestly. So I'm gonna bring it to that minus three because that's where it looks good. And now we almost have a similar color correction to what we did earlier. You can turn it on and off, but the only thing that this one is missing, well, one, we don't have the diffusion built in, but we also don't have the grain I kind of added or the re-noising, re like adding noise back into the shot just to help with the quality. So for that, we're gonna go into effects and type in noise, slap the noise onto there. It's gonna be a, a crazy amount probably at first. Oh no, it starts at zero, my bad. But you're gonna bring it up to a five. And then you can go through and just see, default looks like that and your color correction looks like that. Just nice and crisp, look, look, look how nice that looks. That's the default. Again, very subtle, but the subtleness makes it look clean and professional. So I'll go back to the beginning and we can compare both of them. So this is the default. This is using the plugins that I used. So it's a different style, a little slightly different colors, but you can play around with it. Then back to default and then using the built-in one. So not as nice, but I didn't play around with it as much. And I have more experience with the other one. You'd stack it just for fun to see what they both look like together, but that's a, that's a bit much. Some people really like the color, like the, the bright, vibrant colors of that. And it, honestly, it's not even that bad. It's, just, it's a little too much for me. You can see again, default, my color correction, default, 
built-in color correction. So you can just slightly improve your footage playing around with the color correction and these are just simple ways that I like to do it. Before I go into tweaking it too much to match the exact maps and clips, but you can always save some of these effects. What's nice is even overall, if you think it's too much, I can go into the adjustment layer itself grab the whole opacity, and honestly, sometimes I set the opacity to 60, because I want it to look more like the original, but with a slight color correction. So it has everything I did, and then I brought it to 60%, so it's even more subtle. But in the end, that's what I like, and hopefully it helped you guys out. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned something new. Subscribe to the channel if you want to learn more filmmaking techniques and how you can utilize them in your video game montages.